CO2 with the Mask AI plugin, we're going to do a sky replacement. Check it out. We're going to take this image and turn it into this with a sky replacement inside of Topaz Studio 2. I didn't think it could be done, but guess what? It can be done, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's get started right now. Let's replace a sky. Now, if you wanted to, you could come here to add filter and you could go ahead and, um, you know, add any old filter that you want in here and work on your image. You don't have to replace the sky first thing, or you can replace the sky first. It doesn't really matter whenever you want to, you can do it. But to replace the sky, when you're ready, all you have to do is come up here to filters, come to plugins, go to mask AI. If you own mask AI, and I highly recommend it, it's awesome. Uh, we're launching it right here, and here is the image inside of Mask AI. Now, you notice it looks green. That means every whenever you see green, that means keep. Whenever you see red, it means cut. Whenever you see blue, see like this blue brush I have here, that means compute. That And what we do is we make a tri map inside of here, and we tell Mask AI how we want our image cut out. So I could come here and with my brush, make my brush a little smaller here. And I could start painting across the edges here, okay? And then I could get a, after, and there would be a blue line across here, and then I could come get this red bucket and click right here, and that, the sky would turn red, and that means that would get erased, okay? But I'm going to use a really cool new feature they add in, added in this latest version, version 1.1.0, and that is Auto Detect Sky. So I'm going to click that, and... There's my sky detected right there. I don't have to do anything. Now, I have two choices here. There's mask mode. I have AI for artificial intelligence. It's a little, you know, it's using artificial intelligence to cut your image out. Or if it's a simple image to cut out, you can just use contrast, which is much faster. Contrast will work probably fine in here, but I'm going to go ahead and use AI. Why not? I'm just going to click compute mask. Give it a few seconds here. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, will determine how long it takes the mask to be uh, made for you. This computer is relatively newer, so it, it works pretty fast. This is a Mac, uh, iMac computer. Okay, so there it is. Now, we see two views on the screen. We see our tri-map over here, and we see our uh, cutout sky over here. And there's different views you can get. You can show four windows on here. You can just show the two windows here that it, that it defaults with, or you can show a single one window, which is what I like to do right here. Now you see we have our tri map here, but the map's already computed. Uh, so all I have to do is come up to this little apple here, the little red apple, and give that a click. And you'll see, well, first I have to click on keep, and there's my cutout sky. Now the next step is, Come to background, click on background, click on image because we're going to add an image. Okay, we're going to click on upload image. Your file browser will open up. Now point your uh, file browser to where your uh, skies are. In my case, they're in this external drive called OWCHD, so I'm going to click that on. I know they're in this uh, picture set one, so I'm going to double click that, open it up. And I got some free skies from uh, Mac Fun. Uh, it's Skylum. Now they're called Mac. They were called Mac Fun. Now they're called Skylum. Okay. Change their name. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to open up Dramatic Skies. And there's a sky in here I want to use. This guy right here. I'm just going to click on it and then click open. Or I could have double clicked it. Either way, it would have worked. I can't give you this image because this is an image they gave me. I don't really have the rights to give it to you, but I have an image that you in the description below that you can download as well as this image that you could uh, work, download as well and work along with me. Just use the sky I gave you. It'll work out fine too. So uh, all I have to do now is click transform. Right now we have a black sky. We don't want a black sky, so we're going to click transform. But our sky is right here. See it right down here in this bounding box right here? See the little hand tool? I just got to have, all I have to do is click and drag it up. And look, here's my sky. Hello, sky. How you doing today? Now, right now, it's in uh, maintain aspect ratio. It's checked on. So whenever I adjust this, the aspect ratio will be maintained. Or I could uncheck this, and then I could drag the right side out, and the left side won't get affected. And same with the top or bottom. But I'm just going to leave it in the maintain aspect ratio. But you can work any way you want. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here and see how I want my sky to look. Do I want those gray clouds down in there? 
Yeah, I might go right there. Maybe just stretch this out a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's going to work. If you're happy with it, just click on transform. You can always go back and retransform it. Now, don't be alarmed. You're going to get the tri-map back up as soon as you click transform. And this threw me for a loop. Don't let this throw you for a loop. I'm here to help. Just come back up to your apple. Click your red apple. Click keep again. And voila, there's your sky. Now, you can zoom in a little bit and really examine the edge of your image. And there might be a little slight bit of haloing up here. But here, I'll show you a little trick to take care of that. Go to edge. So click on edge right here. And click on... Um, Sometimes I'll use edge shift. If you pull it to the left, you'll pull the edge in inward on the image. Or if you move it out, it'll push it outward. Usually you're pulling it in because you have a little halo there. But I think, watch this area right here. I think if I do foreground recovery, that'll clean that right up. Yeah, see that? It just cleans it right up. Little foreground recovery. And I may shift that edge just slightly. Just slightly in. Just a little bit like that. And like that, we have a perfect sky cutout, and I'm really happy with that. Let me zoom back out, and that looks actually pretty good. Let's make some adjustments here, and I'll show you something really fun, and this is really a great feature of Mask AI. Let's go to background, and you have a choice here. You can adjust the background, or the foreground, or both. I mean, you can adjust one at a time, but sometimes you need to adjust both. So, what I'm gonna do is look at my background first, I'm on background, so I might just change the temperature a little bit because we have a lot of green in here. So what I might do is take my tint and move it to the left and add more green to that sky. Now, if I go too far, I'll make a green sky, and I don't want that unless I want a green sky. But today, I don't think I want a green sky. I just want my sky to fit in with the uh, scene, so I'm just going to favor it a little bit to the green side just to kind of match it and marry it to this image here. Maybe somewhere right around in there looks pretty good. Let's see, do I want to warm it up more? I could take the temperature and I could warm that sky up more, but or cool it back, cool it off by moving it to the left. And I think the temperature was good. So if I double click temperature, it sends it right back to where it was. Okay. And I could give it more saturation if I wanted to, or give it less saturation. And what I might do is just give it a slight, a slight less amount of saturation. Not too much. Maybe like a let's see. Gosh, like a 0 0.4 how about a 0 0.3 0 0.03 how about that okay so that looks good hey here's a cool feature see where it says blur here well, we could blur that sky if we wanted to so we have a lot of adjustments in here that we can really work with i might give it like a 0 0.10 just blur it slightly um or not let me cut that back hey decisions decisions eh, i'll leave it at 0 0.1 for now and let's try the exposure. Do I want to lighten it up any or darken it? I don't know. I might I might slightly darken it. Just slightly. Now let me go to um, foreground and let's play with the foreground. And on the foreground what I might do is add a little bit of warmth to it. Let's go to the temperature and warm it up just a little bit. Yeah, because there's some of that warmth in the sky. I don't want to warm it too much, but just I just want to add a little bit of warmth. I'm just trying to blend these two images together. I'm not going to waste a lot of time because you can really take your time and really get this image to look just perfect for you. I think right around there looks pretty good. Um, do I want to give it a little extra uh, exposure maybe? Nah, it's too much. If anything, I'm talking a little, and I might bump up its contrast a little bit. Yeah, it needs a little bit of contrast in there. Maybe somewhere right around in there. That looks good. I think I'm happy with that. Let me go back to the background one more time. And let me see. Do I want to pull that exposure back just a little bit more? Yeah, I might. Just a slight bit. I'm thinking maybe right around in there. That looks good. I'm not saying that's the perfect sky for here. But this video is really to show you. You can do this in Topaz Studio too. I didn't think you could do it. But you can. And uh, just uh, today, when I got up, I thought, I'm going to experiment and see if I can do this. And I was so excited to share this with you. So here we go. Our next step is, if we're happy with this, click Apply. Now, you're going to get a choice here. You can choose Transparent, and that would just give you the, the image with the sky cut out of it, okay? Or you could choose Composite. 
choose composite okay and that'll put the sky back on a layer inside of topaz studio 2 so let's click composite and this will send us right back into topaz studio 2 with check it out there's our sky right there is that cool or is that cool and then we could come up here to add filters let's get the hsl color tuning filter I noticed there's some of this blue in the water. It was in the original image, and I don't like that. That looks unnatural. So let's go to Aqua here, and let's take the Aqua saturation back, and then let's go to Blue and take the Blue saturation back, and see that cleans that right up. It also kills my sky up here. So let's come to the Layer Mask. Let's invert the Layer Mask. Come to the three dots here. We'll invert it, and we'll get a brush. We'll shut off the Edge Aware because we don't need it on here. Let's check our brush size out. Right around there looks good. Take our transparency, slide it the whole way to the right till we get white paint. And let's just paint over that blue and get rid of that blue in the water because that doesn't look nice. Right around there. And I think there's a little bit down in here too. That was just bugging me, but there we go. Sky replacements inside of Topaz Studio 2. Who would have thought you could have done that? I honestly didn't think you could do it. But I got thinking this morning, I thought, I think that might be able to be done, and I wanted to try it. Hey, and it worked, and I thought I got to share this with my friends, and that's what this video is about. I wanted to share it with everyone today.